What is up, world? My name is Tommy Wilkes, and I'm a recovering addict, almost 10 months sober. Um, Thank you, Tim, for that wonderful intro. The boys are back and looking for trouble. It's been a (laughs) while. We are all about it. It's been a minute. Good to be with everyone. I am one of your co-hosts here with Tim Snyder and Mike Oxley, and this is Talking Trash Podcast. Welcome to our humble broadcast. We run this podcast as an act of service to those who whose lives have been affected by addiction. We don't do it for profit or notoriety. We place principles before personalities. And I'd like to throw it to our boy Tim for a quick serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you, Tim. And... There we go. Here is Mike Oxley. <laughs> Yeehaw. This is a new, yeah, this is supposed to be Diesel the Donkey. Yeah. Um Mike is not an addict but has um great medical experiences um working in treatment centers and detox centers and we are glad to have him. He is a nurse navigator and special specializes in substance use. <laughs> He resides in Atlantic County, New Jersey, father of four children, and also grandpa to be, fan of Philly sports, boo, (laughs) wildly inappropriate, and a stroke survivor. Mike, it's great to have you. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm I'm actually pretty good. I had a little procedure done on my back this week. Um, So far, so good with it. Um, My back really started going out of whack post-stroke. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg. Is it my walking funny from the stroke has made my back bad or because my back hurts and my walking funny? Mm-hmm. So we don't know. So uh, after seeing the spine specialist, we decided to treat the back and hopefully that'll get me walking better. And if I'm walking better, it won't throw the back out of alignment, so yeah. to speak. So I'm all in and uh, here I am. There we Happy go. <laughs> yeah, hey Mike and Diesel the Donkey. Yeah, man. And we've got Tim Snyder, 41 years old, 1.5 years clean, <laughs> also a, a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Drug of choice, opiates, mm. father to two beautiful women. Um, divorced for two years now, worked as a graphic designer uh, for a pro hockey team. At the age of 16 years old, three times beasting survivor. Hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a beacon of hope. <laughs> Love pudding and a huge fan. Huge fan of pudding. Um, you know, <laughs> and ice cream. I'm a, I, yeah, ice cream. Anything creamy. I uh, And chickpeas. Anything creamy I like, which is probably what ended, ended me up in the hospital last week. But um, I'm okay. I, uh, I was throwing up blood and... You know, like the parents are like, do you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, nah, I'm just throwing up a little blood. They're like, you need to go to the hospital. And I had a really weird experience at the hospital. Um, I'll get to that later. Uh, sorry about the white headset. You know, my my $100 pair don't work today for some fucking reason. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Vicky. Yeah, sorry. <sighs> so if I sound off, uh, it's uh, Tommy's fault because I sent him my <laughs> backup headset. Um <laughs> Anyway, I just I'll yeah, send them back. Yeah, <laughs> They're paying for shipping. Yeah, nothing with me. We had a we had a fun episode last week, um, ten days ago or whatever it was. Um, played some Feels like forever. And had some love. Uh, we got um, we got a thousand views on that on that single episode. Um, I don't know why this is plays and audience. Maybe I don't know. Um, yeah, that was thirty six. Episode wow. 36, we had a 1,021 plays, which is unbelievable. Um, and that's just Spotify. And that's just yeah. Spotify. I don't track anything else. Like YouTube a little bit, but I, I don't even look at that really. Um, yeah, that's just Spotify right there. Um, we're doing something. I have a lot of people contacting us to be on the show. And then they, and then it's time for them to be on the show, and they get 
cold feet. And they're like, yeah, I can't do it. I'm like, we're just recording it. It's not live. There are a million people watching it. But anyway, if you do want to be on the show, you're happy to uh, send me an email and uh, and we'll vet you and <laughs> see if you're uh, a good guest or not. But that's what we do with the, uh, the, the communication with our fans um, is important. Tommy, you just got a delivery. It's in your mailbox, just so you know. Like physically, physically right now. Um, anyway, so that's me. I'm nothing special. Um, I don't think we've ever talked about the fact that I worked at a pro hockey team when I was a kid. Um, this is back in 1999. Uh, I did their web page. I did their graphics. I did everything. Uh, and I'm like 16, 17 years old. They called me Timmy the Kid. So um, that's where I learned all the graphic design stuff. And, yeah, but I was. I, listen, I peaked early, and it was all downhill from there. So, is what it is. I've, uh, yeah, brother, the best is yet to come. Come uh, on. So anyway, <laughs> I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, we got to introduce our boy Tommy Wilkes uh, on the stage here. Tommy Wilkes is a 37 year old man. Uh, he's been clean nine months, and he's kicking the shit out of recovery. Um, his drug of choice is alcohol, and yes, people, alcohol is a drug. He was born in Dallas, Texas, Big D. He re- resides in Hotlanta. Um, he went to Texas A&M. He's a big fan of the Ooh. Aggies. Uh, you know, he's a very diverse human being. Um, he's a con- consultant and a, uh, con- an accountant. Uh, he loves golf and tennis and whatever other yuppie sport you can think of. Um, and he's extremely ticklish, so... Um, Let's I just am. make sure I wouldn't know America. Yeah, let's just make sure we're aware of that going forward. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, Tommy, how are you doing? Like overall, like how you feel? What's going on? Doing great. Happy to be here. I'm blessed. Um, you know, we're just as you said, Tim. We're doing a great thing here, and you know, wanted to give a shout out Look at that. to our boy Tim for these epic shirts right here. Talking. They are sharp. They are sharp. His very sharp shirt um and doing great boys uh, excited for this podcast got a little olympics going on opening ceremonies were last friday two fridays ago an updated medal count for you um total medals the united states has 51 and with 11 gold 20 silver and 20 bronze and second place for total medals is France. But with the most gold medals, we have China with 16. Um, so there's your little Olympic update. Um, Want to give a shout out to my boy Austin Krychek for winning the silver medal in men's tennis doubles. He played for Texas A&M University, Giga Maggies. Wow. He partnered with Rajiv Ram, who played at University of Illinois. Uh, Ram is 40 years old and won a silver medal. Wow. They were up a set and a break, but unfortunately he got broken Sorry. back in the second set and lost in the third set tiebreaker, but he got a medal. And um, I believe the first Texas A&M men's tennis player to win an Olympic medal. So very cool. Shout out to him. Awesome. And yeah, you know, some uh, little uh, other Olympic storylines here. We've got the Olympic uh, Last Supper scene that drew some scorn. Yeah. Um, you know, the question is, is you know, is the, the parody really the Last Supper? I mean, it kind of looks like it. It looks like it. <laughs> but, you know, the, uh, some church leaders and politicians have condemned this. And, yeah. you know, some people on the... Our side are, are questioning if it's really the Last Supper, but, you know, who knows? I mean, you know, people like to cause chaos, chaos. and that's, that's the true. world we live in. And, true. Um, you know, we've got a boxer that has caused some controversy. And, you know, I think Mike can shed a little more light on this for us. Yeah, what's up? I got this guy um, and girl. Basically, this female boxer in the welterweight class um, was banned from boxing last year from the world championships. And the reason was um, during a 
routine blood test came out with an X Y chromosome, which means she is a man. So they banned her. This year, she resubmitted the same credentials to the IOC, the International Olympics Committee, and they found no evidence of this supposed male hormone in her yeah. uh, chromosome. So when the girl goes out to fight the other girl with the chromosome in question, it only lasted 46 seconds, um, yeah. i.e. I, I, Mike Tyson. Yeah. She, she knew what it felt to be hit by a man. Yeah. I think it's men hit 63% harder. Yeah. And she knew immediately that this was not right. And uh, pretty much made her dizzy, kind of out of it, loopy. And she was uh, had to pull out of the match 46 seconds in after this supposed Y chromosome male on national television, on worldwide television, basically punched a girl in the face a couple I mean, times. listen, I'm all for equality and... Uh... You know, it's fine. You can be whatever sex you want, but I, I, I think there's got to be a line drawn at some point. Like, yeah. you know, punching oh, yeah. women in the face, basically. Uh, I don't right. care either way if you want to be a donkey or a man or a lesbian or whatever. Do your thing. I'm wearing a tie-dye shirt. I am heterosexual, just by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, but like, are they going to do things that men do and not do them as good or not? I, I don't know, or do them too good. There's a thing with a swimmer not long ago, same thing. Um, men are more athletic. We are, are physiologically built to hit home runs. Women are physiologically built to have children. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't make the rule. We're the hunters. Right. For years, there's been the ladies' tees mm -hmm. in golf. Nobody's really complained about the men's tees and the ladies' tees in golf. Usually about 10 yards apart or something I, I don't know tommy would be better to answer that but that's been in golf forever yeah. i never really hear any complaints about that the, that's just the, the way it women's is. basketball size is smaller it is oh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the court or the uh, three-point range and all that stuff yeah the three-point range is different too that's funny soccer is the same tennis women is should same. have smaller balls is what uh, i'd say here we go they should have smaller <laughs> no balls, absolutely Mm -hmm. What if they're post-operative? That are they uh, are they not allowed to perform if they're uh, I, actually a, a, a man now? Or do people look at it this way? I, or a man that's a woman now? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it goes down to your chromosomes and how you were born originally with your birth certificate. I yeah. I don't know. I I mean, that's really why do we gotta dance so close to the gray, gray area, area of a man? man woman sports if you want to if you're a man living as a woman chromosomally mm. how many of that population are professional athletes you're right <laughs> 0. 0.111 we, we've talked more about it already because it's definitely something's wrong something has mm -hmm. to be changed and if we can get along with the whole golf thing men's and ladies sees that basic then why can't we with other sports well like that's so what i'm saying there's two bathrooms there's a transgender bathroom like we we try to accommodate people as a uh, as a as americans or whatever we we try to let everybody do do their thing but like it, when it starts infringing on people trying to do their best aka that boxer yeah. girl um i don't know you gotta you gotta check your morals at that point i mean Anyway, I have no idea yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm a no. That was that was well said. You're right, Joe. So yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. just what what hits you at the core? You know what I mean? So I don't know. Olympics are. Uh, I my parents. I was in the hospital, and my parents were watching the Olympics intently. Um, the swimming and all that stuff. They come back the next day. They're like we're never watching the Olympics again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're all about the Olympics <laughs> yesterday. Um, what what happened? And they're like, oh, they they portrayed the last supper and it was awful my parents are devout christians and they were pissed uh they were, i wonder if their viewership went down well i guess it was the beginning so that, but yeah my parents my parents oh my god they're so good and they're like no way we're not we're not doing that so 
It was well, entertainment because we're still talking about it a week yeah, later, right? That's true. Isn't yeah. that what they wanted? That's so true. Th the more we talk about it, the more that's what they wanted. So where's France on the map? Is it in Europe? I know it's in Europe. <laughs> I... By it's... Italy and Spain. Right. It's connected to it's west of Germany. You're right. Okay. Just wondering, you know, <laughs> the Vatican and all that stuff. So anyway, um. That's Monte Carlo. That. Monte Carlo, yeah. Um, anyway, we have a, a good show for you here. Um, we're going to talk about a somewhat serious topic, and we'll segue right into it. Um, Faith-based recovery. Um, you know, I mean, we, we show all sides, and I'm all for spirituality and faith and religion, um, but how it... How it uh, tunes into recovery i don't i i'm still up in the air i see it all the time you know and i believe it but you know some people it turns people off whatever we're gonna get to it um so let's oh uh, let's look at a couple of highlights from last episode um you know we had a fun episode and some good stuff um so let's take a look at uh i don't know let's see uh i'm so prepared this episode uh let's take a look at tommy short real quick here You know, I mean, you just, you, you, you talk about being grateful and like, I'm so grateful for where I'm at and I'm blessed, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm lucky that I have a support system around me, you know, to keep this going. And, you know, like you said, I, I raised my hand, you know, and I, you know, knew I needed help, you know, from, from the outside, you know, I mean, I can't do this alone. And so, you know, I'm blessed for the two programs I went to and, you know, working the 12 steps and starting to sponsor guys. And so it's, it's really cool. And, you know, being a part of this podcast, I'll add in there special. The and, you know, we're, we're here, you know, doing a great thing. I re I just truly believe that. And, you know, this is just some great stuff. So. You like the donuts? Yeah, I do like yeah. the donuts. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was great, Tommy, talking about um, yeah. gratitude. You know, if you're not grateful for something, you uh, it goes by the wayside. You know, you um, you got to be grateful for everything. You know, I'm grateful for the things I'm allowed to be grateful for, the the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I mm -hmm. I know what I'm grateful for, what I should be grateful for, what's out of my hands. And that the third part is the hard part. The, uh, the wisdom to know the difference, you know, I, I can change this. I can't change that. I'm grateful for what I changed and I'm okay with not being grateful for what's not going my way. I can't act upon it and be a negative person, but you're allowed to be not ungrateful, but, you know, not have gratitude towards something that is actually a detriment to your recovery. So you just got to be careful as far as uh, what you, you know, where you're putting your attention in your, uh, your gratitude spectrum. Yeah. You know, I'd like to share, you know, with our podcast, you know, something that happened pretty recently that I'm grateful for. I was able to be a part of getting a friend um, to treatment and, you know, he's going through a lot in his life and, um, he admitted to impact yesterday. Mm. And so, you know, he's, he's starting his recovery journey, um, this week. And so he went through detox in Texas and then, you know, worked with the family this week and involved impact. And they were instrumental in, you know, working with the family and they, they ended up deciding, um, to, to go out of state to, um, for him to go to impact. And so it's, you know, I'm grateful because it, it was, you know, a lot of it was because of my journey that of why they reached out to me yep. and why the family reached out to me. And so I was able to speak in to the, to the family and, um, you know, share my experience and share, um, the impact I had, um, with the, the, 
the, at impact, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But the, the, the great experience I had at the impact program. Well, it goes to and, show Tommy, yeah. like Tommy calls and everybody jumps. I'm sure like it's Tommy Wilkes as he was the best, you know? So like your reputation as a not, as, you're only nine months sober. Um, your re- reputation already, uh, perceives itself. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, but at nine months, you remember what it was like nine months ago. Some people at four years forget what it's like four years ago. You know what I mean? So you have this, this fresh um, outlook yeah. on recovery, and you're able to step into somebody's orbit and, and help them. And I know you were working hard on it. You were telling us about it. Um, that's what this show is about. Like, <laughs> I, that's, that's what we're here for. You know what I mean? And we've all helped somebody through this show. Yeah. And Tommy did it yesterday. And that's amazing, you know? Like... Uh, they trust you enough. You're, you're, you're vouching for this guy, basically. Um, yeah. When you call Impact. Yeah. And they take your word for it. If he's good, we'll take him. You know what I mean? If they're not going to call Joe Schmo and ask him, who do you like for recovery? Yeah. Tommy Wilkes calls. He's got somebody out of state. It sounds very complicated. Um, but you got it done. And it's frustrating. I've done it, too, through this podcast. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... it's but yeah, and it's, then, it's then the other... It, yeah, it is. And, the, the, you know, the family is trusting me on the choosing the program right? Um, that's best for him. And, you know, the best thing for him is to get separated and, you know, focus on himself and, you know, work in the 12 steps to, you know, get down to the, the root causes of, you know, everything that's going on in his life. So, so you said he detoxed. Kind of, with, oh, I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. It's kind of an awesome responsibility. Yeah. And you have to be up to meet the challenge. I mean, in the medical, we have family that – that trust our opinion on things and friends being a nurse, but you know, somebody that respects you, that's an awesome responsibility to have yeah. their welfare and their recovery. Kind of, you take ownership of it yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. I know ultimately they're responsible for their own recovery, but generally they're listening to you and because you're a success. So that's where it becomes a tool for you and just use it wisely, of course. And yeah. it's a, uh, it's an awesome responsibility. Good for you, Tommy. For you, yeah. Tom. yeah, for sure. It seems like you stay on your side of the street for most things. You're, you're nine months clean, but you're not acting three years clean. You're I'm nine months. I've, I, yeah. I'm a baby into this. I've heard you say it on our podcast. I, there's been a few times in my life where I was nine months clean. I was like, I'm the mayor of clean town. Everybody's got to bow to me, <laughs> you know? So like I was out of my, uh, out of my, uh, my, where I should have been on things. I was, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't being real. I was acting like I was, you know, and it took me out. You know what I mean? So yeah, good job, Tommy. We're, that's what we, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. And that takes precedent yeah. over everything else. Everything. This yeah. podcast is going to run regardless. Um, I mean, listen, if we were sitting down, ready to just start four minutes ago, and somebody ne- had a need, we, the, st- the podcast wouldn't go on. All our attention would go to that person, and we'll figure it out. It's happened a couple of times. Um, that's what we're here for, you know? So like, Or we would record it and let everybody see what it is live to intervene and manage somebody's recovery for them. Yeah, for sure, if they were... Uh, they were okay with that. So, like, it's just, it's an awesome responsibility, like like one of you guys said. Um, it really is. It's, it's to have somebody, honestly, let's put it this way. You have somebody's life in your hands. Yeah. Black and white, you know. No doubt. Treatment, this, that, the other thing, airfare, where you're going, how you're getting there, whatever. They're putting, whether they know it or not, they're putting their lives in your hands. Yeah. Like, they have a disease. They have a problem. That means they have a much higher chance of dying if they don't do something. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. So that comes into our spiritual thing we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I was telling the boys before the podcast, I, was, I said, you know, if you, um, if you, you know, you've seen death, you know what I mean? As addicts, we've all seen death. Me, I've died a couple of times. Um, you know, Tommy looked over the edge a little bit and was like, nope, I'm not going down there. So, like, when you've actually seen death face-to-face or or, or felt it, um, that will make you, ch- make, you, make you check yourself. And, uh, 
You know, why am I here? Why didn't I die? Why, you know, you got to be open and grateful, like Tommy said, to whatever is keeping you on this planet because something is. So like we said, if it's life or death, anybody in recovery, um, there are a lot of people that just want to here, here's my problem. Fix it for me. And yeah. we can sometimes, you know, because they're dealing with a lunatic drug addicts fucking stealing all their shit out of their house. So, like, we can jump in and say, this is what to do. This is, you know, this is what I did, you know. So, like, that's yeah, really, that's uh, that's cool, Tommy. I'm, I'm glad you uh, did that. I'm glad you shared that with us. Yeah. Um, you know, he he was, you know, a little resistant at first, you know, when the family came to the detox center to they had already gotten flights and um you know didn't didn't tell him beforehand and so you know he you know was was resistant and i and i told the wife and i was like you know if you can get me on the phone with him you know i i, I think i can can help and so they, i got on the phone with him and you know after a short right five minute conversation um you know he consented and decided to to go and so it's just it's an answer to prayer and so you know his journey starts now and so i'm going to try and visit him you know in the next several weeks um, you know let him get get through a few of the steps and then um go and visit um impact and um you know share my story to the group there and Amazing. you know yeah just you know be a friend to him and, and you know, but he's in a good place that, and he's in good hands so and the family knows that yeah sometimes that's all it takes um just to have a an ear to talk to a, for a friend you know a lot yeah. of people have they're they don't have friends especially at 40 years old or whatever you know so like a lot of times people just need a, a friend to to validate that they're okay yeah, to that exactly story. you know it's just, just like, one more little nudge you know mm -hmm. yeah exactly. it's almost like tommy you were like kind of the mandalorian you know <laughs> you were kind of like this is the way yeah this is the way and five minutes he's on his way and that's yeah, great yeah. that's good for yeah. you and good for the that's family and good for him that that he yeah. knew you to call that's that's well, really great a, yeah they made a damn good decision to uh absolutely you know, to do it that way you know um because that and he's got he's got two kids oh yeah and okay. so yeah. you know the the wife is you know, fighting for the marriage and the family. Right. And that's what we talked about last episode, how hard it is on, on our family members. Um, yeah. Some right. of them will just shut you out. Like some did with me. Some of them will step out and forgive you, even though they've lost sleep over you for years. Um, you know, so that it takes away, you know, the family is, is integral in, in a recovery situation because that's, you don't know what's going on. Now, all of a sudden, you went from up here, being high or drunk, to down here where everybody else is, and you don't know how to navigate that, even just emotionally with people. On, you know, it's And they just want the best for you, but you have drained them so badly um, that, like, that's it. Like, a lot of them will shut you out, and I'm, a, I'm an example of that. I'm happy that I have the support that I do have, but at the same time, um, you know, they uh it's family's tough man especially in addiction all right let's um august birthdays anyway august birthdays matt to go back and find me. <laughs> uh, and Amelia Quarto. Happy birthday to you guys. Um, I, I've been in the hospital. My team is loaded now. Like two. I'm like half dead. My headphones didn't work. Like I'm wearing, I look like I'm playing Xbox. I look like I'm playing Call of Duty here. Um, I had a rough, rough week or so. But um, let me share. Let's see. Let me share real quick about um, 
Actually, Mike, would you uh, read the August awareness for us whenever I find it? Uh, no. Yeah, we got to be aware. August is a, a host of important dates. It's uh, Summer Safety Month. Mm -hmm. It's National Breastfeeding Month. That's me. It's National Immuniz Immunization Awareness Month. It's Back to School Month, mm. which is I thought was September, but... Eh. National Farmers Market Week is in this month. So important. So is National Peach <laughs> Month. Equally. Wonder important. if that goes with the breastfeeding. National Golf Month. There you National. go, Tommy. National. Go. Uh, I'd rather be waterboarded than watch golf. Honestly, <laughs> I, I just I can't. I just, for Christ, I'm not good at it. I mean, I can drive a ball like two hours, but like I hate it so much. So uh, yeah. So yeah, Summer Safety Month. It's August. It's hot. Be careful. National Breastfeeding Month. I mean, who doesn't like breasts? Um, That's right. And feeding. So that, there you go. Immunization Awareness Month. Not Don't care about that. Back to School Month. Oh, the kids hate all All about like, the kids. As soon as you right. get to the 15th and the 17th and 25th, you're looking at that, that September 7th back to school thing. Um, that's I had to reread that twice. I thought I said Black Schools Month. I was like, what? Go ahead. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> it's uh <laughs> Pickle box. I'm happy. <laughs> no. tickly, tickly. I'm happy for the farmers. They uh deserve some no uh, recognition. Um I like peaches, if I'm gonna be honest. So I'm hoping my peach Georgia, Georgia the peach yeah, state. I'm, I'm hoping that my uh my journey here in Georgia gets me some good peaches because I think they suck in New Jersey. Um, I bet they're so good here. Um, I have several hundred that are ready to be harvested. Actually, the, my wife really? bought the cans to start her her canning cool. process. Will start in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, one tree is ready to drop, and uh, the other tree is not far behind. Crazy. So we have it's several awesome. hundred. Several hundred. All right. What I also want to talk about real quick is our listenership. What the? What is going on here? Episode thirty six, our last episode. Um, we had 1,021 plays. What? Um, our audience was 949. Uh, 950 people sat and watched our show. Actually, I don't know, like uh, 400 people watched it and 500 people listened to it. So thank you so much, everyone. We appreciate your... Uh, your support because it uh it helps us it helps you we're all here to get through this thing together that's the point um and that's yeah. only spotify that's just spotify yeah. that's our main our main uh our main host but uh you know apple uh podcasts uh, we're on there youtube uh, iheart radio um i don't really know how to track all these other ones i uh I'm have to figure that out i guess but no on apple podcasts we are getting some uh, response based on they're moving us into different categories. We're like nonprofit or the 55th out of 5,000 nonprofit um, broadcasts. Uh, Tommy's sh setting off fireworks here. For our listeners. All right. Yeah, I'm right on. Um, yeah. So, like, you can't complain. We're doing pretty good. Um, it's probably a thousand listeners because we haven't done a show in 10 days. One of them sitting there. But um, <laughs> what I've noticed. We'll take it. Well, yeah, we'll take it. Um, what I've noticed is we're getting, we're doing two shows a week. We're getting about 800, uh, a show, a lot of stuff I don't count for. So I, I think, I think we're getting about 2000 people a week and it's just growing. Like where I had to go look for people and friend request them and do all this stuff. I don't do that anymore. They find us. Uh, I, that's, that's big. You know, we have a yeah. great audience. Um, yeah. they ask us for help. I mean, most of it is just, yeah, get into a detox at a rehab. Um, and I handle those, but there's some I bring on here that are complicated. There's some, um, I, I hand off to the boys. You know, we, we're here for our audience and, and our audience is family members, people who need more information about addiction. And the other audience we have is addicts and either in or out of recovery or just on the precipice of detox. Like they need, they need help. You know, I don't know any other podcast like this that does that and i've looked um yeah so we're not about us principles uh before personalities um you know that's that's all it is so 
we are, I'm going to share a quick, st- a quick story. Um, so I was in the hospital last week. Um, I went to the local hospital. Uh, they tested my, um, my butthole. Actually, I'm just remembering it now. The dude, I had to lay on my side, take my pants down and he did a, uh, we were, he got up in there to get like a sample or whatever. He was in there. Like, I didn't but, like you, that. but you were at the dentist. This is what I don't understand. What? I don't understand what you're saying. All right. So. <laughs> what the fuck? So, anyway, so uh, long story short, I'm just stuck in this hospital. You know, uh, they're trying to get me a bed down in the main, in Gainesville, in the main hospital. Oh, you're and in Gainesville. I was in Habersham, and they were trying to get me to Gainesville. I'm kind of out of it. My hemoglobin's like a six. They're giving me blood transfusions, all kinds of stuff. And I asked for my own medication. My own stuff, my stuff, and I brought my own stuff in. With my parents there, this nurse practitioner comes barging in, and she says, I'm just going to lay it out straight for you. He is drug-seeking. He's asking for all these pills, um, and he failed for fentanyl. And she says this in front of my parents. <laughs> Listen, so anyway, I, uh, long story short, uh, she got the fentanyl person wrong. She... I guess she glanced at somebody else's file, clicked on the wrong name, and I'm pretty sure which one of the guys was the fentanyl guy in the uh, in the emergency department. But yeah, she pops in and says I was um I fell for fentanyl, and like I went on my own um you know portal thing and saw that I was clean for everything. I was I was I've been in that situation before where I was on the spot and. Me and drug tests don't get along. There's there's been times in my life where I've taken a drug test and failed for something and have been totally clean. So this one, like, listen, lady, why would I have buprenorphine in my system and fentanyl? Like, why don't you just take a second? So she saw that. She went and grabbed my bags of my bag of pills. She they counted them, right? I, this is a medication I brought in to help me, not hurt me, right? They counted my pills, and they were like, you're short on pills. You took too many. I'm like, lady, I have a pill case thing where I put two weeks' worth of pills in. That shut her down real quick. But, like, unbelievable. It's a weird situation. But I was calm through the whole thing, as were my parents. Nobody got worked up. My parents know I'm not high on fentanyl. They know there's a real problem going on. Um, You know, so it was a very – it was a very strange situation. Tim, I'm – I'm sorry that happened, but I can tell you from medical point of view, from when we had to send people from our detox mm-hmm. for any kind of emergency, it could be a a foot injury. Let's just say they slipped in the bathtub while at our detox and broke their foot. Right. From the moment they walk into an ER, as soon as they see that they are have a history of drug addiction, they are treated like second class citizens. Yep. You get the worst treatment. Um, you are treated like redheaded stepchildren. Absolutely. And here you're here for your foot. You're coming from a rehab. This has nothing to do with your um, addiction. It has nothing to do with the substances in your system. But they're made to wait. They're 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 mocked. They're it's really hurtful. And I've seen it um, to go over to the hospital for a medical emergency, maybe coming off a of mess. And their heart rate was just a little too high. I would avoid sending them as much as I could because I knew this was going to happen. Yep. Um, it would turn them off. And they would walk right out of the hospital. And they would not come back to treatment because of how they were treated by staff at the emergency room. Yeah. It, it was a real shame. Now, if you feel like that's not working against you, you know, here he's here for his foot. And here you're here for some other issue. And she don't even know what she's looking. It's an addict. He's drug seeking. Yeah. I I've heard it a hundred times. If that is in your file, if that is in any of your medical records, you are treated with the most disrespect I've ever seen. And whether you're white, black, old, or young, they just these nurses that are so great and doctors just roll their eyes at yeah. addicts. They sure do. And they don't care if your pain is real. By the way. Sorry, that's my rant. But. You're absolutely. You couldn't be more right. I mean, this is great. Like, I, I, it took me back a minute to where I was in situations like that. Like, this is crazy. Like, 
Why? Why now? I'm I'm 500 days sober on Sunday, and like she thinks I'm a fentanyl. I don't know even what I couldn't get fentanyl if I wanted, and you know. And you're on bupe, which does she even know that you couldn't? They right. Only, what? Right. On buprenorphine oh. means it blocks opiates. Subs. You cannot right. get high. You cannot get high. Um, so they took all this information, and I think when she saw that, I, or she, <laughs> the other patient, but she thought I, I, it, it was me that failed for fentanyl. Boom! She's coming in. She breaks several thousand HIPAA laws by announcing my shit to everybody. Um, I, I was I was insulted, but like. I've been in this situation before. I just got to chill out. And I was calm. I yeah. know I didn't use fentanyl. Um, it's a test. And It's really a test. She didn't come back. I went to them. I, I said, I held up my phone. I said, do you see this? This is my thing. And, and the nurse was like, oh, shit. Nobody came and apologized. Nobody gave a shit. They just, I'm still a drug addict because I'm on buprenorphine. And, you know, I, they don't care that you're 500 days sober. You're just not going to get the right care because... You're looked down upon um, and try Second to go to place. a hospital with Medicaid or no insurance and tell them that I mean, forget it. You're, you're going to they're not going to do anything. They'll pretend like to draw in blood. But like it's it's sad. And that's the reason we need people like Mike and we need people um, who are in addiction medicine to to do what they do, because if they don't, you know, those those people are there for us. You know, they're not there for the guy that broke his foot. They're there for the addict. And and to have that differentiated is good. It's good that we have a higher level of care for people who are addicts because it's out there. It's not in the emergency room. Um, yeah, she was so proud that she figured it all out. And uh, when it all settled down and she saw she was wrong and all that, nothing happened. They still treated me like shit, though. I didn't... Um, all the I, time. I didn't leave that hospital for two days. You know, I would hear them talking outside my room. Hey, he's a junkie. He's the junkie one. Like, hmm. I, I was really insulted, but like, I didn't, I didn't act on it. There's a version of Tim who would have jumped out of bed and cracked him with a bedpan. But like, not this, not this time. I'm just gonna chill out, let it be. I know the truth. My parents didn't flinch. Um, I was proud of that. You know, I, 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 uh, I worked hard. You worked hard enough to earn that. That your parents. Uh, Tim and Vicky never batted an eye because they know you. Yeah. You know, I I never batted an eye because we, we talk almost daily. Daily, yeah. In a non-gay way. Yeah, even well, a little gay. Um, but yeah. like you can you can spot it. You know what I mean? Like we, we think we're getting away with it, but we're it, <laughs> our loved ones can spot it. They can see eh, something not right with him today. Um, right. You know, <laughs> there's I, I, there hasn't been one day since I've been here since October. Where my parents thought, eh, there's something's not right about him today, you know. So like, I I haven't been put on blast about um, addiction in a very long time. Um, so to have that happen and uh, you dealt with it well, you you did. I mean, it never gets, it should never be okay. It should never be normal, and that and that's not how you're supposed to be treated. No matter if you have leprosy, it it <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean. You're, you should get the same care that everybody else. And unfortunately, that junkie term, it is universal that they just look down and treat you like bad. They yeah. treat you bad. Well, we talked in earlier episodes about, um, you know, what it's like when you're, you, uh, you know, like dual diagnosis, all that stuff. We talked about a paradigm shift, whatever. I love that word. Um, in medicine and addiction, how it's come in full circle and one's with the other and one's with the other. So, you know, to see it not be full circle yet, to see the other side of it, to see that you can be accused of using and, you, you know, to to see that that's still there because of a stigma is a, it's a tough thing to swallow, but it's probably always going to be there. It's just, I yeah, think it's getting... Just, just to, add, you know, um, chime in here, Mike, you know, is it, could it be viewed like... It's because of the uh, history of abuse that it's just a more precise slash, you know, um, uh, acute level of care. Yeah. I mean, or I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate of like, no, okay, because no. of the, what are you saying, Tommy? Like, if you walk into like, an emergency room, say I'm an addict, is that what you mean? Well, like, 
you're saying a higher you, level. You were, you're saying you felt you were treated differently, mm -hmm. but that's because of not a good different. Okay, so can describe that. Well, you know, making you wait, not answering your question, the physical aspects of rolling their eyes, um, not giving you what you want. Okay. Uh, could you call the doctor and see if I could have some time and all? Oh, okay. uh, he's he, he's already drug seeking Martha, <laughs> and okay. not do it. Um, just everything a on a bad nurse would do to a patient without yeah. physical harm, of course. Um, calm down, sir. Calm down. Like I'm not getting worked up. Calm yeah. down. Yeah. Like wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Like you know, I am calm. Um, I keep telling me to calm down, and I'm not going to be calm. Oh, you yeah. see. Uh, they they know what buttons to press. Yep. You 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 you're treated like you you're treated like a secondary citizen. It's really, it's really. I wish you could be a fly on the wall in a in an ER in the middle of the night when somebody's having a drug related or non drug related emergency that has a history of having an addiction. Well, how about it's, this? It's, it's a shame. I go I go into the okay. ER with the GI problem and I get a higher level of care. If I went to the ER with, um, I don't know, some virus, of the bacteria, pneumonia, whatever it is, you get a higher level of care. You get treated for that thing that you have, that disease you've picked up, whatever it is. Um, but in addiction, you go in and you'll get a higher level of care. You get the boot out the door and uh, good luck with everything. The Don't only, release you. The only, thing, the only hope that you have in that point are the medical interventionalists at the hospital. There are people that work and donate their time to emergency rooms and psych units to the addict patients, to the uh, addicted uh, patients. And they'll, they'll step in and help to get into rehab and all that stuff. So, yeah. This is why I, I mentioned that so many of us in addiction nursing have a history of it ourselves in our families, in our, in our jobs, in, in our own lives, but we can relate. You know what I mean? Sure. We can relate. Sure. And it's really hard to see the way um, the 65-year-old grandmom that has a drinking problem is maliciously talked to and treated in the ER because she came from my detox. Yeah. And she's coming for something totally different yeah. than, than alcohol today. It's easy it's to jump on that bandwagon and bang guys up because they're in addiction. Um, right. You know, but like... You can't, you can't not get the care. There's got to be some liability there, but like, I, I don't know. I just feel like, uh, like people like us need to, you know what it is when, when nurses and doctors and stuff, they, they put a label on you and they treat you a certain way. Um, those are people who haven't been touched by addiction. Like maybe they see it in the, in the hospital, right. but they, their son didn't die of, of an overdose. They're. You know, their nephew didn't um, have a horrible car accident from drinking. Like, they're not touched in the way other people are touched. And and the people your that... niece was sex trafficked and missing mm -hmm. for a month. You know, and yeah. just yeah. I mean, if, if if you're not in it, I mean, I would always try and go with them, even when it was unrelated, because I'm a good talker, so I could go in there and be like, hey, hey, doc, how are you? Yeah. What we have here is and kind of keep them their heads to the grind their nose to the grindstone yeah. about this is what we're here for everything else i'm taking care of across the street we just don't deal with broken bones right. um so yeah it, it's constant and sometimes i was the buffer with the doctors yeah. and the hospital and you know i've tried to have meetings with the er staff and the er department with our detox to kind of bridge that gap and and kind of talk and have an open discussion, have a meeting with the ER uh, higher ups and 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 my staff. They never, they didn't care. I was just gonna say, mm. did, did it get any, any traction at all? No. Nope. So nope. these are people who, who are separated from addiction. I actually met a nurse when I was transferred to Gainesville, who um, who was an addict or so, recovering addict or so. Treated. They'll me come totally up to you and me. say, "I got you. Don't worry about it." Treated me so much differently, like so differently, and. Uh, it was it was a refreshing thing. I should have been treated that way the whole time, um, you know. So, it's uh, um, it makes me sad that addicts don't have a uh, have a chance going in the emergency room. They really don't. They're not going to be admitted. They're not going to be treated. Uh, you may get some IV um, 
IV saline or whatever, uh, hydrate you, and they may give may give you a librium, so you don't you don't seize on their watch. Other than that, they will do the minimum, the yeah, bare minimum. Bare minimum. So like, I'm not angry with healthcare workers, They're, but you, you know, you, you deal with it so much. I get it. Like, there's a, plenty of addicts that just end up in an ER. Like they didn't. I showed up on my own accord. I handed them my medication, so they got that right. Straight off the bat, I'm like, listen, I'm an addict. They they offered me Ativan three times. And by the third time, I'm like, does it not say in my chart that I'm a fucking addict? Because you certainly knew it when you wanted to put me on blast. But now that you're doing your rounds, you have no idea I'm an addict. You're mm-hmm. looking to give me four milligrams of Ativan. You're handing me a relapse three times in the hospital where I should be getting better. And you're you're putting a, a, an avenue in my path where I... I I could be dead, like because of you. Eventually, oh, a little Ativan. Ooh, that was nice. Get out of the hospital. Hmm. Maybe I'll go drug seeking from doctors. And it all ends in disaster. So I told them a few times, like, listen, I don't get how it works because all the, I'm labeled an addict when it's fun for everybody to call me a a, a junkie and stuff, which I heard outside my bedroom. It's, I bet you did. It's fun for them to say it, but then when it comes time for medical. Intervention, like actual medical stuff, they dropped the ball. They didn't give me my, my medications right. They went to hand me Ativan th- for the third time at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, you know, I get pissed. And, oh, the junkies, the junkies being a junkie down there. He's all pissed off. And, yeah. I'm I, pissed off at I you for it. fucking handing me my relapse. You piece and this of is shit. in the country, the country woods of western Georgia. You know, Eastern. Like, yeah. yeah. Somewhere. Eastern? No, it's Western. It's Western. Uh, Gainesville? Yeah. But they got no teeth. For it's, sure. It's Eastern. I don't know. Who cares? Um, yeah, you're in Eastern Georgia. So anyway, we're. Um, <laughs> I mean, to get don't go to Gainesville there, Hospital. Like, holy shit! Like <laughs> that's night and day right there. That's they'll label you and and accuse you of things, but when it comes time to medically treat you, they drop the ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, the bare minimum. That's why I tried not to send people to the hospital. I mean, obviously, there's times that I have to. Yeah. But, um, you know, even a, a mystic in a vein, you know, like they would get ascites and the vein would pop out and they would have this these kind of terrible um, infections in their arm from a bad needle stick that left terrible scars like you can see on Tim's arm. Um, but that can turn into sepsis. And you can die from sepsis, and it can happen very quickly. So that was something that looked minor, just an irritation in the arm. But I would have to send them over there to get special antibiotics, horse dose IV antibiotics, to prevent them from getting sepsis right. and maybe losing the arm or dying. And they had their wits about them. And this, this thing happened two weeks ago. I'm just infected because you're seeing it. Yep. They, they didn't complain about it. Right. And, and that's where push comes to shove, where they would just be so disgusted. They would just say, ah, the hell with it. And walk out of the hospital and not come back to rehab either. They thought we were in cahoots, and and we weren't, you know. Well, one of our biggest um, uh, things that we tell people is um, advocate for yourself. And it, I get it. It's, if it's your first rodeo, you don't know how to, but, like, that's what we're here, we're here for. You know, you're not going to get the care if you don't say, I need the care. You know, you're, it's just yeah. not going to happen. Nobody wants to. Tommy, were you ever taken to, to the hospital for having a blackout or for throwing up or having a reaction? Were you ever taken to the hospital by no, a friend in college? No. No. I was only taken to the hospital once. I should have been there 10 times. Like, I overdosed all the, the whole police departments in our cold sack, and I'm fine, then they leave. I'm right, right. out of the hospital. Everything's done. He's fine. He gave him Narcan. But I, I was only taken to the hospital once um, under the influence, and it was alcohol. And I was being a crazy person. And, yeah, they took me to the, uh, they took me to the hospital, and they – what did they call my room? The drunk tank or whatever it was. I just <laughs> laid tank. there for 12 hours. <sighs> I called it a drunk tank. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So they just mm-hmm. made me feel like shit. I felt like shit. I'm, I'm hungover now, and they're asking me what I want to do. I'm like, I don't know. I ended up in a psych ward for five days and then I come out and the world's upside down. So like, yeah, it's, it's really tough to find care between, I mean, it would be nice if more doctors and more nurses were in recovery, but they're not. They see addiction. They don't see recovery. They don't care about recovery. 
or they are and they're just angry. They're they're angry at themselves. They you know, they they got issues. Yeah. Ones that are and um or know somebody and can be that nasty. Yeah. That evil to a to a patient that's sick. I never could you know, I, I just never yeah. you know, it's like telling a kid, Okay, well the kid don't put your hand on the stove, don't put your hand on the stove. Put your hand on the stove. Ouch, it gets burned. You go to the hospital and be like, oh, another kid didn't listen to his parents, and you're going to sit there with this burn on your hand as a kid. No, they don't do that. Nope. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's a whole different tangent, but um, by and by, the medical community has come a long way with addiction. The medical community has encumbered uh, mental health into uh, some other treatment of addiction. Um, they've even, you know, brought in mental health into the detox process, yeah. which is which is very new, uh, very new. I, you know, that was something you saw later. In, but those two being, you know, in in harbor with each other yeah. can help, can help. But right, when you got to send them out, it's not a good scene. I know, because because it, it hasn't changed enough yet. Like we're talking about the change, addiction, and dual diagnosis, and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm an example. It hasn't changed enough. You know, I'm there. I'm clear-eyed. I'm throwing up blood. I didn't get the right treatment for three days. You know, you got to be kidding me. So let's mm-hmm. talk about Mike beating Tommy on, the left, on Jeopardy. How much fun was that? I make that was fun. Let's do, that? Let's do yeah. it again. So yeah, last week we played... Uh, the tournament of champions coming up. Yeah, recovery Jeopardy. Uh, and Mike won 1600 and, uh, oh, that was like my SAT score. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go. Jerry. Good time. We, uh, we do some fun things here. Other than that, other than that. So we'll, uh, we'll try to figure out some more stuff like the Covered in Jeopardy. Um, we're, just, we're just throwing this, this show up here because um, we haven't done one in a while. I've been really sick. Um, Tommy's got stuff going on, whatever. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're happy to be back. Um, Let's see what. Uh, New clean time. Oh shit. Um, yeah. Let me just get my wits about me and see where we're at. We make a script, but we don't follow it. Um, so <laughs> it being labeled and faith based recovery. Yeah. Let's. Sorry, I kind of, I kind of, st- I kind of took us on a tangent, and I didn't want to. But since you were in the hospital and yeah, that. No happen that's bullshit we don't need bullshit. that yeah that's a great i i when i wrote it down I'm like that's a topic in itself you know and i can yeah. keep going on it but we'll uh we'll shake things up so mm-hmm. yeah, let's do some clean time we have to uh, we're gonna go 15 minutes over this episode i can already see but it's all right Ooh. we'll uh let's but we it. missed one so yeah no doubt so it's exactly what i'm saying so where the hell is clean time i blow this every time Boom. All right, so here on Talking Trash, we like to celebrate clean time. What is clean time, you ask? Clean time is the amount of time you've abstained from the substance you were once controlled by. So, yeah, very important. All right, we've got Brian Cobb, 33 days. Daniel G, 34 days. There you go, guys. We've got 30 day chips. Yeah. Andres Estrada, 44 days. Eric Adap, 51 days. <laughs> Adaptable. David D, 58 days. Almost 60. Happy birthday, Nikki Nikki Starr is even closer. Hey, Nikki! Steve W, 63 days. Cassidy B, 88 days. Back to the future. Here we go. Jimmy Jigabo, 89 days. Tony oh, J, later. 93 days. Good boy, Tony J. Happy birthday Maria to Maria Gladden. Gladden, 93 days. Jared Black, 102 days. I passed the 100. Frank Kinney, 113 days. Mandy Jean, 133 days. Love that selfie. Not to be confused with Billy Jean. <laughs> Jamie Michelle, 134 days. Michael B, 180 days. 
Happy birthday, Ricky McVicker. Ricky McVicker, 182 laps. Aunt Patty, 234 days. Craig Clipper, 242 days. Here we go. T Drizzle, 294 days. He's looking good. William Gucci. Douglas, 297 days. Timothy Snyder, 498 days. There you go, buddy. Amelia Cuarto, two years. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Amelia. Stella Montez, two years. And change. And change. April Pritchard, two years. Casey Baxter, three years. What are you looking at? What you looking at? Three years. Lisa, Lisa Milton Welke, six years. And our girl Tina C, seven years and eight years this coming month. Bev Vance, ten years. Full decade. Matthew Gillespie, twelve years. And there. And yeah. Good luck, everybody, and keep it up. The newcomers, we have Ingrid Andres, 20 days. We hope. Anthony Seals, 25 days. Way to get back on that horse. Ingrid said it was supposed to be super fun. I hope it is for her. So, uh, if you guys want to be on Clean Time, drop us a line. Um, Tim at TrashPodcast.com or reach out to one of our social medias. You can see we're everywhere but your neighborhood bathroom stall. Get yourself and get some Narcan. Yep. Please. It could save a life. Um, I handed out some Narcan last night at my meeting. So, um, See that? Good. Yeah, and it's that's important. An, and that's an AA meeting, correct? Yeah. Yep. That's hey, good. Most I, of I, are most of are you still chairing? Yeah, I do it twice a week all of a sudden. I'll I'm glad back. to hear it. Yep. I chair firmly on Sundays, but like this girl on Fridays is like, I'm scared to do it. <laughs> Will you do it for me? I'm like, yeah. So I'm like their chairperson, idiot, idiot sitting up there. Don't know what to do. So it's it's nice. We do like a, we do the twelve and twelve, and we do the, do an open discussion meeting. Um, a lot of people in there are, are drug drug addicts. You know, they are a lot of people court mandated more than you'd see in New Jersey. Um, really? I'm signing off on like eight or nine sheets, and they all sit in the back and don't listen. So good on them. Um, yeah, it's all right. right. It's all right, man. They're there. Maybe a light bulb goes right. off one night. Absolutely and right. They, they got to be in the building. Like yeah. my brothers have said, the doorknob was was the the main thing. To open the door. The, the higher power opening the door and sitting there was how it happened. You got to be sitting there. You never yeah. know. You just same thing with Narcan. You never know when right. you're gonna need it until it's needed. Um, so yeah. So that's that's that. Um, we want to touch on. Oh, my friend at Health E Georgia. Um, she's my friend. She's her name is Elizabeth McKeon, and she's um, she's she basically helps people. Like it's a nonprofit organization. Um, it supports uh, mental health and sustainable programs for substance use disorder. Um, they promote promote the use of peer support programs like RCOs and recovery re-entry det- detention centers um so like this is no money from this nothing like that just we are um we acknowledge people that are doing the same thing we are um she's doing it from a medical side and she's always on the road always doing what she's got to do um but she's she's awesome <laughs> i love her we're gonna have her on soon but uh yeah i, I see what she's doing it's important she, that's where we get all our narcan from um, I looked her up. I mean, the organization .org. When you see .org, it's for real. Yeah. They're really doing good work. They're yeah. really doing. And this is in Georgia. Imagine if this thing was national. We wouldn't have the problems that we have. So what? That's what she's trying to do. And a beautiful girl, lady, lady woman. She's, uh, you know, a uh, well, lady woman. She's a lady woman. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. Not many of those left these days. No. So she. She's uh, she's gonna be on our show soon. Um, we're just, you know, she, I don't know. It's people like schedules this, are tough. Schedules are tough, you know. Um, but for anybody that wants to be on our show and are considering con- contacting us, it's not hard. 
we, we send you a link through text message. You click on it. You're on the show. Your iPhone is your is your camera and mic. So it's pretty easy. You don't have to come anywhere. You don't have to do anything special. You don't need any special setup. It would be nice if you had. And it's us. Around. Yeah, it's us. You know? This yeah. isn't an act. This is how we would answer the phone if you it. called me right now. Yeah, we don't we don't piece these things together. We you know we do it the right way. So um, yeah, and it, I mean if you go to trash dash podcast how to work it'll take you to our website um but yeah i mean it is what it is we have dot org we got dot com we got dot net we got dot but you know we got everything so <laughs> <coughs> we pretty much covered the bases and you can find us more on uh, on google now so yeah our friend uh elizabeth mckeon at healthy georgia also also want to uh, recognize the addiction support group um, that's run by our friend with 12 years on clean time, uh, Matthew Gillespie. Oh, um, he runs that? Yep. Okay. Um, he's always commenting on our stuff. He's yeah. always, he's a yeah, great Matt. resource. We're, we're definitely getting, um, uh, uh, listeners from him. Um, we're definitely are. That's great. Um, so he's a good dude. And we try to, this, this is what we're doing. We're trying to. I saw something where he, I think he talked to Jelly Roll or Jelly Roll was involved and reached out. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he, Jelly Roll is a, a musician. Okay. Yeah. So what Evidently, he had reached out to that group. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So, I didn't realize that. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, he's he's a he's a character, but uh, he's 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 good. He loves recovery. He's always involved in everything all over the country. He's uh, out of New, New York. York I he's think he's a New York City boy, you know, and. Uh, you know, I remember those days. I, w I wasn't allowed in the city. I could just go in and come out, but they wouldn't let me. I would get into fights and things would happen in the city. So I don't like New York City personally, but Matthew Sorry. has made a life of it there. And anyway, we're just these kind of people we recognize because they're our supporters. They're the ones that say, hey, listen, this talking trash thing's kind of cool. You might want to look at it. Um, so yeah, we're grateful for him. We're grateful for uh, Elizabeth. We're grateful for what's coming up soon. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff. We're really starting to grab some traction. <laughs> oh, it's kind of amazing to me. So thank you, everyone, um, who listen. Uh, like even the birthdays. I do the birthdays. I want people to know that we see them, we hear them. You know what I mean? Um, and we have emails, like tons of emails. Um, so I, I don't know. Would you guys want to get to, like, an email? Like, uh, I know... You read them. Are they urgent? Are they uh, something? I think they're very general and yeah. could be talked about encumbered. One of them I think we talked about today mm -hmm. um, and encumbered it. Um, but um, no, I I think that they could wait and we could give people a nice crisp hour and ten sure. this week to, di to digest. That sounds good to me. Um, real quick, let's. Uh, all right. Get your day counter here. I uh, I use this. Uh, I made this graphic about, I don't know, 30 days ago or 40 days ago because it says I'm at 426 and I'm almost to 500. Um, you know, so I'm proud of that. Um, go to Google Play or the App Store and get NA Meetings. Just type in NA Meetings. Um, this app is difficult to navigate, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, Meeting Finder, fantastic app uh, on the App Store and Google Play. Um yeah, it's uh, this one's a little more, a little easier to navigate. Um, so check that out and go on our socials and check out our social media. We got a lot going on on social media. Um, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, go to our website trash-podcast.com, um, Apple Podcast, Spotify. Our stuff is current, always up to date, always new content. Thank um, you to Tim. Ah, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, you do good. How I, that's how I get back. So, yeah, so I think it's, I think it's good. I think we're doing the right thing here. So, all right. I think that's about everything. Um, I don't know, boy. Hour and ten. Who cares? You know, a lot of I, I would I look at other podcasts and some people go like an hour and forty minutes. I'm like, who is going to sit for an hour and forty yeah. minutes and listen to you? <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> I expect most of our listeners to be done at the hour mark and not listen to these last ten minutes. But you know, it is what it is. So. You know, all right. Well, I'm feeling better. I didn't die. Um, That's good. Yeah. That's uh, good. You know, I was close. Um, but I couldn't vape. Oh, my God. Trail and trash. Say what? Um, Tommy, when you're done this episode, go down to your mailbox. You have okay. a, 
uh, a treat down there. Will do. Because your buddy Timmy loves you. Um, that's nice. neat, but that's creepy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you had a good point. Um, it's it's indistinctly marked. Nobody knows that it's... Uh... Oh, even more <laughs> creepy. Uh, all right. I don't, I don't want to stop the podcast, but I have to um, because I'm an adult. So I love everybody. Thank you for listening to Talking Trash Podcast. Episode 34. I'll be singing when we're winning. I get no doubt.